Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I want to talk a little bit about quality control and just quality in general as an idea. Um, I've been having power outages in and out here, so we'll see if this actually gets done, and I'm just going to keep going if the lights drop out, but whatever. So, uh, the, the energy's quality, very, very low. Beside the point, though, basically, you know, I recently did the review of the Real Steel E571, which was a knife where I had two really bad knives right after another in terms of quality, in terms of trouble. And that was, that puts a really sour taste in my mouth, and it makes it very hard not to judge that company. And similarly, I've raised quality control issues with other companies, like CRKT or Benchmade, that have had some quality control struggles in the past, whereas other companies don't. And so I wanted to talk a little bit about how I think about quality control and quality in general, and uh, you know, give a little bit more uh, reasoning behind that here. So the way I tend to think about it is that every company's got themselves kind of a distribution. If you think about this as a scale from absolute junk to uh, absolute perfection, well, this is kind of what it looks like here. Yeah, I, I mean, there, there may be knives that are even more perfect than perfect. And I'm going to use knives as an example, but this works just as well for watches, flashlights, whatever. But anyways, the perfection is up here, and, you know, this is the most functionally perfect knife you can imagine, and this is just like, this is not usable, this is a POS. But the thing is, for most companies, I think the bulk of their, what they make falls in the middle there. If you want to grab, you know, think about this as probability, you know, how likely are you to get a knife at a certain quality level? You know, from any given company, they may accidentally produce something that is perfection, that is the world's great. Even the worst company can make something that's incredible on occasion. And and, you know, similarly, even a good company can make something that's terrible. There are always these kind of tails off to the side here, but the bulk of it should be right in the middle, maybe ideally a little bit more in this direction. But this is really what we talk about when we think about quality control for a company, for a, a piece of gear, whatever, is how often are you getting great stuff? How often are you getting terrible stuff? How often are you getting something in the middle there? And we're always trying to think and figure out what this looks like for a given company because it does vary. I mean, you can imagine, for instance, a different set of curves. I can imagine a really terrible sort of company might have a curve that looks, and pardon my drawings, these are not stellar, looks something more like this, where the bulk of the stuff they make is utter crap. But there are some good ones that get out there. Similarly, you can imagine a company that does mostly great work, where they're mostly putting out incredible stuff, but there are always some pieces of junk out there. And indeed, looking at the YouTube comments on every video, you can see some evidence of this. I can talk about a company that by and large does good work. For instance, um, you know, Lamic Cutlery comes to mind, or... Uh, Spydeco's Taichung Factory, you can talk about a whole bunch of companies that Chris Reeve tend to do good work, but there are always people who are like, yeah, I got a bad one. That's a fact of life that happens. Similarly, on the other side, you get people with really crappy knives who say, mine was great. I love that knife. It served me well for many years. Like, yeah, you probably ended up here. But anyways, all that we're trying to do as reviewers and as people trying to navigate this world is to figure out who's making, you know, who's got what distribution, who's, who, how likely are you to actually get something that's worth a damn. And so that's kind of the, the, the biggest question that I face here as a reviewer, is trying to figure out whether a company is doing one of these things, where you're likely to get something great, doing one of these, where you're likely to get something terrible, or someplace in the middle, and what does that actually look like? You're trying to figure out what the actual, you know, truth of their, uh, of what's coming out the door looks like. And this leads to some interesting questions, because, you know, okay, we as humans have a pretty good sense of likelihood in things like this. It's a weird example, but imagine that you're sitting at your desk and you sneeze. And I'm not going to sneeze right here because I can't, but there's kind of a splatter pattern where it's like, you know, there's a bunch of droplets and then there's more going off to the side, but it's it's pretty concentrated in one area. Uh, it's That's gross. That's a terrible... Why did I just use that example? But it, it's a thing, I guess. So if you were to, you know, go off to, to, to eat lunch and then you come back and you see a splatter pattern on your desk, like, oh, the intern used my desk and he sneezed. Hey, thanks, intern. That's spectacular. If you want to see one splatter pattern over here, here, and then you were to see another one over here, kind of a bigger set of two splatters here, you would think, okay, the intern sneezed twice, I really got to fire that guy. But you're not going to be thinking, wow, he must have developed a second mouth and sneezed in two directions at once. That's not very likely. And it's pretty easy for us to kind of separate aside, okay, the, 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 there, were, there were two of these things going on here, not just the, the one. 
we are really hardwired to be able to do that. And indeed, we, we're, we're pretty good at figuring this out. If we get the same little, you know, junk to perfect, and I'll just use something that looks like a J and a P here. You know, if you are, you know, repeatedly checking, if you're repeatedly pulling out things from boxes, if you're repeatedly making purchases, and a vast majority of them are ending up up here in the perfect range, you're probably going to take a, a very reasonable guess that, you know what, this is probably what it looks like. Or similarly, if the majority of them are ending up down here, you're going to take the guess that, you know what, this is probably what this company is doing. The, the weird thing comes when you get, you know, kind of a, they're, 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 it's going on on both sides, where you get either junk or perfect, that kind of thing. Usually that's the sign of a company that's got some kind of an issue going on there, where one of their factories is problematic or something like that. But nonetheless, I mean, we are all just estimating that kind of thing on a regular basis, and it just kind of comes down to likelihood. Like I said, this whole thing is how likely are you to get something that's worth a damn? And this is, as a reviewer, what I'm constantly doing. Let's say I pull something out of a box. Um, oh, what's a good example of this? Um, I actually don't have a great example offhand. So, okay, we'll use that little real steel E571. And I pull it out of the box, and the first one I got was someplace down here. I can't even see that on the camera. Here, let me try a better, bigger marker. So I pull it down and it's living down here someplace. That's not Stella. The thing is, that doesn't tell me a whole hell of a lot because you know what? It could be the case that, you know, it actually looks like this one up here and I just got really unlucky and got one of the bad ones. Or it could be the case that that one's right in the middle there and that, that that's pretty much the experience. And so that gives me information, but not all that much information. And this is why, in general, I, I try to avoid making these really sweeping quality statements about things based on one observation, on one knife, on one watch, on one piece of gear. You know, that's why I went back and reviewed a second Seiko watch after the first little SNK 809 was a piece of crap, etc. The thing is, if I pull another real steel out of the box and it looks like this, that gets to be a little bit weird because, okay, it's pretty improbable that out of this curve here, if they are all mostly perfect, I happen to pull two really rare crappy ones. That would be really a little bit strange. Uh, it's like, you know, you have a pair of dice that's got, you know, sixes all over it except for one and you roll a one twice in a row. It's not perfect proof or anything like that, but it's a little bit weird. And it makes you start to think. And so if I were to pull more and they were all down here, we'd pretty much know that this is what's going on. But the thing is, already, that gives me a little bit of evidence in favor of that. And, you know, for me... In order to really just come down on a company, like Benchmade is the company I've come down hardest on in terms of quality control. And that was after one experience. I went to the Shinola store uh, here locally, and I tried a bunch of their Shinola edition valets. And I pulled, I forget how many of them. There's a video, watch the video. But basically, the way it ended up is I was pulling these guys, and it looked something like this. And then there were one or two or three that were okay in this whole sort of thing. And I hate to say it, but that looks awfully like probability. And it looks something like this. It ain't pretty at all. And so that has led me to conclude that it certainly for that knife, this is probably what we got going on here. It's really unlikely to get a bunch of crappy knives if the actual curve is a nice one, is something you really want. And, you know, so that's kind of where I look at these things. If a company does one bad thing, I can usually look past it, like, okay, that's a fluke, that's a weird one, that's off on one of these long tails here. In the same way that if I get a perfect knife from a company that doesn't usually, then it's like, okay, it's probably a weird one. But if I keep getting things, if I do completely at random from people who send them to me from just buying it off the shelf at a store, and they keep coming back crappy, there's a pretty good chance that they're coming out of the factory pretty crappy. That's, that's just, that's a fact of life. This also kind of illustrates the role of quality control. In a perfect world, what quality control would do at a, at a company would be to just chop this off. To basically, the quality control division would just prevent this from happening. They would sit there at the end of the production line, and anything that is under this line here, they would just throw back, or they'd throw out, or they'd, you know, refix, and make sure that everything sits. And so at that point, this is all you got. These are the only possibilities here. Yeah, you might get one that's a little worse than normal, but it's not enough that you care. You might get one that's perfect, but even better. But none of these would ever leave the factory, and that's a perfect world. And again, when you end up in a situation where you're getting junk that's leaving the factory, 
What that means is that quality control is broken there. They're not pulling the bad ones there. And I'm not saying necessarily that's the case with any particular companies, but, uh, well, I guess I kind of am. But still, that, that's the important thing here. The other thing I want to kind of highlight here is that there is a difference in how I handle things in terms of size. I am totally sympathetic. A company like Benchmade is handling a lot of knives. They are pu putting out a ton and a ton and a ton. They have a bunch of employees, a bunch of shifts. I'm sure they've got a huge quality control team, and maybe some people are better, some people have a better line, whatever. Or maybe they just don't have the time to quality control every piece that comes by, and they don't have the time to train their assemblers to say, you know what, this one's terrible. I, I can get that. But the thing thing is, as you become a smaller and smaller company, I expect these bottom parts to be lopped off, like flat out. I'm sorry, if you are shipping 20 or 30 knives, you know, a week or something like that, and that's, that's pretty big still, you need to be looking at every one of them, and you need to be making sure that your curve is looking a whole lot more like this. And at that point, with this small side, I, I would really hope that you would start refining your methods so you can, you know, get closer up here. And, you know, on the custom front, there should be no question here. It's not the case that the knife wasn't seen by the maker. It's not the case that one slipped by. That was the only damn thing in your hands. So they all better be freaking here. This is your custom knife distribution curve. You can be even perfecter, but then it better fall the off. You, this should be what you are buying. And so I have very, very little tolerance from small companies for these really, really poor quality control sorts of situations. You need to be controlling that. But anyways, that, that's kind of, that's why I feel like, okay, you know, one or two, that can be a fluke. Oftentimes it isn't, but it can be a fluke. And that's why I often look at forums and things like that. If I if I experience an issue with something, like for instance, a good example of this is the Giant Mouse GM2. This was a knife that was great in a lot of ways, but it had really splintery, ugly carbon fiber. The carbon fiber was just not great on that knife. And so I looked around, I looked at other people, what they were saying about it, and a bunch of other people were reporting that same issue. So there's a pretty good chance that it wasn't just the case that my knife had bad carbon fiber, but that the, um, a bulk of them did. If you estimate this, this is going to be someplace down there. So at least on the carbon fiber front, that one was way below the, the, that was way below the average. And that was a really ugly situation. And that can be helpful for me too. Because sometimes if there's a weird little QC issue, I'll mention it, but it's probably not a big deal. But if everybody's having the same weird little issue, guess what? It's a real big issue. So I don't know. That's kind of where I'm thinking about this. Interestingly, and as many of you have probably already figured out, what I actually just described to you in a lot of ways is the basis of modern statistics if you're doing science that you kind of have an idea of what things look like and you're always trying to guess you know if you're trying to figure out if a, a new drug or something makes people healthier you know you, you you got one group and the question is if i uh well let's say this is health you know if you got this group here and i give a bunch of people the drug and some of them get healthier are they actually a different group or is it just you know different people on the same anyways that's beside the point but that's kind of how i think about these things is that you know every company no matter how good or bad they are is going to make something that's pretty exceptional on one side or pretty terrible on the other side and the biggest question is well what do you what, what does it actually look like what are they actually putting out are they mostly putting out good stuff are they somewhere in the middle or are they mostly putting out junk with occasional wins and so that's the way I'm always trying to think about this and um you know, I know that some of you guys are going to disagree with the calls. And the other thing is, I know that a lot of you have had different experiences with all of these brands. A lot of people comment, I've only had good Benchmades. Go buy a lotto ticket. That's great. Or maybe they are improving. I don't know. But still, I'll need to do, you know, to look at more to check that out, to find out. Uh, you know, need a few more tick marks up here to say these things for sure. But anyways, that's why people can disagree on these things. It's not the case that there is just one value. This is also why we should probably be sympathetic to these companies at some level, and it's weird for me to say that as somebody who's somewhat not. Uh, but still, I mean, even the best of companies is going to put out the occasional crap, and that happens, uh, and they that's how they make it right. But anyways, I hope this was remotely interesting, and uh, let me know what your thoughts kind of are. What, where have you been surprised by, you know, the, the, the distribution, so to speak? And uh, yeah, anyways, hope this has been interesting. Little talky, little unstructured, but uh, have yourselves an absolutely wonderful rest of the day. Bye now.